Today, we're going to take a look at a Wi-Fi hacking wearable on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. The Wi-Fi Deauthor wristband by Travis Lin is the physical manifestation of the Deauthor project by Spacehoon. Now, this is designed to give you the ability to operate the Deauthor project without needing a computer, and that's pretty cool if you want to be able to do all the interesting things the Deauthor can do without plugging it into a device. Now, in order to follow along, you can actually build this yourself if you want to buy all the components, but I recommend that you check out the Amazon link and the other links in the description if you want to pick this one up too. If you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article that's linked in the description as well. Once you have a deauthor board of your own, then we can get started. All right, so this section isn't strictly necessary, but if you do get a deauthor wristwatch and you don't have any firmware on it, you need to fix corrupted firmware, or maybe something's just not working and you want to reinstall it, then this is the way to go about it. All right, so first we'll go ahead and start at Stefan's a GitHub repository, github.com slash spacehoon. And then you can go to the ESP8266 underscore deauthor page to see more about the project. And we'll be looking for the releases tab where we can click on it and find the applicable release for the deauthor wristwatch. So once it loads, we'll see a bunch of different bin files. And those bin files are what we're going to be using in order to install this. So we would go ahead and click on, for example, right here. And after we installed it, then we would go ahead and load it on using a tool like uh, ESP tool, and we would be able to actually start working with it. Now, the most common thing that happens, and actually let me go here, I'll type history grep ESP tool, and there's nothing. All right, well, thankfully, Stefan has some great guidance on this. So if you get confused when you're setting this up, there are all the commands that you need kind of package and whoa, I want to stay in here, kind of package into the wiki. And there's some great installation tips that you can follow in order to make this a lot easier on yourself. So I'll just go to the wiki and the command for installing this is pretty straightforward. So I'll click on flashing the firmware bin file. We're not going to compile using Arduino IDE, but here you can see the command is ESP tool dash P whatever serial port is connected to, write flash, fm, dout, some hex number, and then ESP8266 underscore deauthor, and whatever, basically whatever firmware we're flashing. So we would go ahead and run this in our terminal window right here, but we would replace this with the firmware binary that we downloaded, and we would replace this section with the port that we are currently connected to. Now, I'm not going to overwrite my firmware right now because it's perfectly fine, but you might go ahead and do that and then find that the screen's not working, which is exactly what happened to me. All right, so the way to fix that is we can check out the setup display and buttons section. And once you connect to this, you can actually go through and enable the screen uh, if it's not already working. Now, when I'm scrolling down, I'm going to go to the section about the after adjust code, uh, here we go, uh, to the adjust code section. And we'll need to go through and make sure to uh, define use display as true if we want to actually use it. So um, here we go. So the best way to do that is go into Arduino IDE. We're going to go to tools and we'll select the port under which the Deauthor wristwatch is connected. And once we select it, we're going to there we go, it's already selected. Press Command Shift M. We can type help to make sure that we're able to interact with it. Yes, yes, we are. And we'll copy and paste this command to enable the display. It'll say set display true, comma, com, or uh, semicolon, semicolon, save settings. So this is actually two commands, they're just compounded together to make it easier. Now, again, this is only if you are having a hard time getting the display to turn on. If it's perfect, working perfectly fine, then you don't need to worry about it. But go ahead and set the display and we might need to just reboot it but aside from that everything should be set up and we should be ready to go now also i'm going to be using a target that is a simple wi-fi hacking target i'm calling it just the reactive target that's based off of the default arduino tar uh, access point sketch or client sketch so what i'm basically doing here is continually checking to see if a if a wi-fi network is accessible if the device is able to connect successfully to it or if it's being blocked 
Now, if it's being blocked, then it will go ahead and warn me with a red flash. And if it's able to connect successfully, it'll let me know with a green flash. And if it's never able to connect at all, meaning something's wrong with my access point, it'll flash blue. But hopefully that won't happen here. If you want to follow along, you can go ahead and go to my GitHub, github.com slash Skakar, and check out the Wi-Fi hacking workshop repository, where it's located under the reactivetarget.ino file. You can flash this to any Node MCU or D1 Mini, basically any ESP8266 based board using Arduino, and have a handy target to attack that won't get you in trouble. Once we have the firmware on the deauthor board, then we can go ahead and turn it on by flipping the switch here. As it powers up, you'll see it is by my friend Spacehoon, and I'm going to go ahead and go over the options before I actually attack something. First, we can see that it will actually do a little clock. So if you just want to disguise this as a normal wristwatch, you can go ahead and do that. And oh, I, before I forget, in the background here, you can see my little uh, reactive target, which is currently connected to a Wi-Fi network and should be flashing green every time it successfully checks. So if we are able to attack it successfully, we should see it basically start flashing red. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go back. We're gonna go to our first option, which is scan. And scan will allow us to go through all the available networks nearby and select one to attack. So it goes scan, select, attack. And then we also have a packet monitor, which just to show you, will give you a general idea of how much activity there are there is in the general area, which seems to be a lot actually. It'll also go through the different channels and you can use this to toggle which channel you're scanning, channel nine, channel eight. And you can see that it'll basically give you information about which devices, or rather, which channels are in use by some devices in the area. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back and I'm gonna select the scan function. We'll do access points and stations and it's gonna go ahead and start scanning. All right, so it's almost done. And we found seven access points and four stations. Pretty cool. So next, I'm gonna go back. We're done with scanning, so we're gonna go to select. I'm going to look at the stations and try to identify the one that is my reactive target. And this is an Espressif device, so we can actually see it's the first option right there. We can also see an Apple device and some other stuff too. All right, so we're gonna select the Espressif device. And this is, again, our test thing and we'll see we get a little asterisk next to it now so we'll go back and back again and we're ready to go to our final section oops which is the attack menu all right so the attack menu is where all the fun happens if i wanted to clone this over and over and over i could do this attack the beacon attack if i wanted to basically send out a bunch of probe frames looking for this network or rather for this i guess device in this case then i would uh, select here but I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm going to select the deauth one, which should disconnect our target from its little network, and it should start blinking red in distress. So we'll go down to start and press the button, and we should be able to deauth our target. There we go. As you can see, it can no longer connect to the Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna go back down to stop, and it should be able to reconnect again consistently and uh, if it is, yep, there we go. So that's just a quick little demonstration of how we can use this watch to scan, select, and then attack a network. And anytime we want, we could just turn it back on and it should start attacking again. Very cool. So thanks to Stefan for this and Travis from uh, DStyke who made this little piece of hardware. It's super cool. And you can also tell the status of what's going on by this uh, NeoPixel right here. So. If you're interested in a great piece of hardware that can attack nearby Wi-Fi networks that you might not even be able to see, especially I would maybe say security cameras or something like that is kind of an interesting use case, then this is a great little piece of hardware provided you don't do anything you're not supposed to do. The Wi-Fi Deauthor wristband is a really amazing project and a great way to support the developers of the Deauthor project as well. Now, if you want to pick one of these up, keep in mind, it is capable of doing some things that might be illegal in your country. Specifically, deauthing a Wi-Fi network that you don't have permission to attack could be a serious problem. So make sure you check your local laws before you start firing off this device on networks you don't have permission to test. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte link in the description. 
If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.